when we do things wrongfully or with the incorrect motivation, we run the risk of losing the reward. The Lord spoke to a group during his ministry called the Pharisees and the Sadducees, who did things more with the motivation of being seen and warned them. And what were these warnings? We will speak about them in this devotional, because we cannot do it alone, nor should we. Welcome to our devotional, Mana, where we listen to and obey the Lord's word. Okay, remember, our World Conference is coming up. We are in the last week to register, which will take place May 31st in the city of Armenia, Colombia, where we will be gathering as the entire family of Mana, and you can still join Go to our webpage, devotionalmana.com, where you can register for our upcoming World Conference, Mana. And remember, write to us through our YouTube channel. Send us your questions, comments. Okay, when we do things, what is the correct motivation? Do you think we as Christians sometimes make the mistakes of doing things to be seen by others? What do you believe? What do you think? Write to us. It's important and we will be sure to reply, to respond to any questions. Matthew 23. This is a very particular passage because here Jesus had already spoken about the Pharisees. He had warned of their teachings, but here the Lord practically denounces this religious group publicly. Then Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, that observe and do, but do not do according to their works, for they say and do not do, for they bind heavy burdens hard to bear, and they lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. And so what is an attitude that often separates people from church? Well, I often find or meet people along the way that tell me, Pastor, do not talk to me about churches. I do not want anything to do with churches or institutions. There are those who had terrible experiences one day when they visited a church or began to congregate. There are those whose faith was harmed by a congregation or abusive leadership, authoritative leaderships. I've met people along the way who have been very, very harmed in their faith because of this, because of the poor management that is sometimes given to Christian faith by certain institutions. But there's something important, my dear family, that I'd like for you to understand. Most times, Christianity is preached with good faith, with the best intentions, but where there are human beings, there will always be mistakes, excesses, especially when there is a lack of maturity or a lack of spirituality, things are mismanaged. And the worst part is that what suffers is the faith of people. And I would like to say to those who throughout time have experienced traumatic situations, please do not lose your faith in the Lord. I'd like to say to them that sometimes God allows certain things for us to mature so that we develop our confidence in the Lord, but not to become separated from Him. Or from his word, the Pharisees practiced terrible things within their rituals. And Jesus is very emphatic in this passage when he describes them. First, Jesus speaks about how the Pharisees and the Sadducees maintained a posture of knowing everything, of knowing it all. Here it says, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Allow me to explain here where it says Moses' seat. It refers to a seat made out of stone in the synagogues where the teacher in authority at the time would sit. The Jews spoke about the teacher's seat. As we speak about the teacher's seat today, and this is why it says that they sit in Moses' seat and from there they teach. This expression is important to understand because precisely they considered they had full authority to speak, to teach. They thought they were the final authority when they spoke, when we had taught that authority is in the Bible and not in the person who is teaching or preaching. There was a Berkeley comment that called my attention 
that described the seven types of Pharisees. First, the shoulder Pharisee, who carried around all his good deeds and justices on his shoulder for everyone to see. Then the Pharisee who waits to see. This Pharisee always had the good intention to carry out good deeds, but always found the reason to do them later and not now. The blind Pharisee who was so holy that he would turn his head from any woman he would see in public, but would constantly trip over things and would be wounded. The mortive Pharisee who was so humble that he would walk inclining his head, barely raising his feet so that everyone could see how humble he was. The accounting Pharisee who was always counting his good deeds and who believed God owed him for all the good things he did and how good he was. The fearful Pharisee, the one who did what was good because he was fearful, afraid of how God would punish him with his judgments if he did not do so. And the Pharisee who truly had the fear of God, who loved God and did good deeds. And so listen to this characteristic of the Pharisees. It says, For they bind heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on men's shoulders. And when we talk about this first accusation of these religious leaders on behalf of the Lord, precisely it leads us to understand this, that sometimes we pretend or we expect people to do a bunch of things and we require much from them. And this is often found in the family context. For example, why do many of our children do not believe in God and His Word? Because often we as, as parents are requiring, but we are not teaching Christian principles, but instead we are requiring or demanding or ordering a bunch of things that become heavy burdens for our children. For example, it is good to teach our children to pray, but everything has to start with the Christian practices we exemplify at home. But it's not about whether we tell them, if you do not pray, then you will be condemned. If you, not, do, if you do not pray at a certain time, then this or that is going to happen. No, it is about teaching the practice. For example, if our children see how ever since they were very small, at an early age, they see us praying, kneeling, that we set aside time to read the Bible, to sing praises. This, in time, creates a culture, especially when parents invite their children once a day, once a week, when they are small before going to school to pray with them or praying with them before they go to bed. This creates the habit, but not impositions, because this is a problem when we try to impose we are not teaching a life principle, but instead of thinking, unfortunately, everything becomes a burden, a heavy load. And this is what happens often in Christianity. Why are there so many people who do not pray? Well, because we are told if we do not pray at a certain time or a certain amount of times, then we're not good Christians. But no, instead I believe that we need to approach prayer as a discipline and what this means is that it's not going to be easy at the beginning and what is the only way to learn to pray well I've mentioned this all the time throughout all the years that we have been carrying out this devotional the only way to learn to pray is by praying not by taking a prayer course and so careful it cannot become a burden or an imposition because then I will never do it but I should begin to do it for example, what do I do? Someone who is not used to praying, who never prays, I'm not going to tell them that they they have to pray for an hour or a certain amount of time because then God's not going to listen to them. No, of course not. I have to tell them to begin with a small prayer, a short prayer where you can express, where you can present your petition in front of God, your needs and approach God to have communion with Him. I assure you that a prayer carried out well in time will become a strong prayer. And in time, we do not even realize the length of the prayer. We begin praying for a minute or two. And before you know it, we're praying for an hour without even realizing. But how does this happen? Well, it happens as a discipline that later becomes a habit. But if I teach it as a burden, then no one's going to learn to pray. And this is the problem sometimes with good intentions. Because I'm not saying that there's bad intentions here. Often parents pastors we all want to tell people what to do and perhaps these are good things 
and we're imposing them or we say, this is why things do not go well for you because you do not pray or this is why things aren't working out for you. No, do not teach prayer this way. Teach prayer as a life principle because if somehow they learn to pray one day, they're going to say, you see, mom, dad, you told me that if I were to pray, things were going to go well and look at what's going on. Well, no, because they were taught prayer with the wrong motivation. I have to teach others to pray as a life principle and not for things to go well or for things not to go bad. I have to pray as a life principle. But from a religious perspective, sometimes we teach things imposing them or demanding. And this is what was happening with these Pharisee leaders. They placed heavy loads, burdens on the people telling them you have to pray this way you have to pray at certain times you have to pray under these parameters and people would see them and were not inspired once again here in matthew 23 it says but all their works they do to be seen by men so the problem was not what the pharisees did the problem is that what they did they did with the wrong motivation in other words the pharisees prayed the pharisees read the bible The Pharisees fasted, so the problem was not what they did. The problem is when they did these things, they had the wrong motivations in that they did things to be seen. But with this, there's a grave problem because the Bible tells us that what we do, we must do out of our heart. Remember the passage of Mark we read yesterday where it said, These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They pray for a long time, but their hearts are far from me. They read the Bible for hours, but their hearts are far away from me. They go to church, but their hearts are far away from me. This is why we must not fall into the mistake of ending up doing something to be seen, because we end up losing the practical sense of things. So do you see, my dear family, the traditions were not bad, because deep down, traditions teach customs and habits. The problem was that for the Pharisees, the tradition replaced God's word and this was the problem because now they were looking more at the traditions than what was written in the book of Moses let's continue reading what else did it say about this these men it says they make their phylacteries broad and enlarge the borders of their garments remember that the phylacteries were those small leather boxes that inside had small scrolls of scripture And they would tie these to their arms and to their foreheads. You've seen the Jews sometimes place these in their foreheads in between their eyes or tied to their hands. And this is based on the biblical passage of Deuteronomy chapter 6 that they fulfilled textually where it says that you will place God's word as a sign in between your eyes, on your hands, on your doorposts. And this is why they place a mesosah on their door frames of their homes and the Jews fulfilled this to the letter and they used these garments and the borders of these garments precisely stemmed from their intent to fulfill the Mosaic law this order was given to them in numbers the book of numbers and so these religious leaders would take their phylacteries so that people would see them and they would expand the borders of their garments so that everyone would see how obedient they were to the law of God. But that's not how it works. It is not about appearances. When we are a son, a daughter of God, there is no need to pretend. No, it is about your deeds, your testimony, your words. For example, we have to be honest. Why pretend we cannot boast about our Christianity when our spouse is next to us because the first ones to give faith of our Christianity are our spouses, our husband, our wife, not our pastor or our brother in the faith who admires us because we are a good Christian. No, no. Those in your own home give faith, testimony of your true Christianity because they see you just as you are or you cannot pretend or hold postures because they are the ones who hear you speak, who see you react and act a certain way. So this is truly where we prove who we are because if we are doing things just to be seen, then we are sure to fail. Because often we get to church and we say, 
Brother, may God bless you. Sister, may God bless you. And we show a good face in front of everyone else, but truly this is not who we are. We get to church and we speak well and we are respectful and proper, but then at home we curse and outside we are vulgar and use curse words. No, my dear family, this is called religiosity. My dear spiritual family, those who are listening, this is why the Lord says, I want your heart. You are not deceiving anyone when you try to pretend to hold postures like the Pharisees. The Pharisees did certain things. They imposed heavy loads. But the truth is that this is not the way to be true Christians. But this is an expansive topic. And whenever I begin talking about this topic, time just runs out. Because there is much to learn from the postures of these men. Tomorrow we will continue with the study of Matthew 23. Okay, our suggested reading for today is Exodus 12, verses 18 through 20 or through 33. Do you recall when the Lord tells Israel that they were to eat a certain bread? And do you recall the characteristics of this bread? The Passover bread. Also, do you recall what the meaning was of placing blood on the door frames? Okay, so read, take notes, send us your comments and questions. Pray with me. Say, Lord, I do not want to live my Christian life imposing heavy loads on my children, on my spouse, or other things, burdens of things that I do not do myself. I do not want to live my Christian life pretending as if I were deceiving others when the only one I'm deceiving is myself. I want to be a true Christian, a Christian who lives what he believes, who practices what he preaches. Because the grave problem of these religious Pharisees what they was that they spoke a great deal but did very little. They said they would, they, they would say they practiced things but they did it with the wrong motivation because they would do it to please or to pretend with others and not to please God. So let's not fall into this mistake and instead let's live a life that is pleasing to God. Lord, thank you for this day, for this time. Thank you for each listener of Mana. And we ask that you guard us, that you care for us moment by moment. We commend ourselves to you. And we ask for your blessing in Christ Jesus. And I await for you tomorrow. So we may continue speaking about this religious group. Blessings to all.